Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Mercala? Marcilla? But that girl's a guest in my house. Her name is Carmilla, and my daughter is dying. This is episode 206, recorded January 3rd, 2024. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rotten. This podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic, or not-so-classic, film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? I am doing great. <laughs> great! <laughs> That you re-recorded that opening. Yeah, Nobody know. knows that. You don't have to say that. <laughs> Why are you saying that? All right. Uh, okay. Also joining us, <laughs> Phil Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, author of a book he'll tell us about here in a minute, and oh. all around the nice guy, Bill. How you doing? Well, I, I have had, book. I have, yes, there's my book, Realm. Uh, boy, I have had a week. I've had a couple of adventurous weeks. I have, uh, I swam with the manatees and I fell down a flight of stairs. I think I've got all the bases covered. So mm, with the I'm manatees? still here to talk about it. Yeah. You and the manatees <laughs> fell down a flight of stairs. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> They're very heavy. <laughs> oh man. We are going to be reviewing the vampire lovers from 1970. I'm excited to do that. But before we get into it, I believe Jeff Moore has something to say about Play Now Media. Yes, uh, Gruesome Magazine and Decades of Horror are partnering with Play Now Media. They have uh, lots and lots of streaming channels and apps that you can access through Fire Sticks or Apple TV or whatever, Roku, on the website, all kinds of stuff. So anyway... Um, we, decades before the 1970s, are on the Wicked Horror TV channel. So Wicked check us out TV. there. Uh, we, we, you know, they have, a, they have a nice flexible thing. If you sign up for an account, you don't have to pay. You can get a bunch of movies with ads in them, you know, just like you get in Tubi or Freebie or Plex, a bunch of other ones. Or if you decide to pay, you could get ad-free and then there's also premium content. So check it out. We spend a lot of time going through there finding stuff we can watch. We do indeed. Lots of stuff we uh, do ends up being on there at one point or another. Yes, sir. All we right. We like them. They are good we, friends. We do. We do. And they have a variety of channels. So check them all out. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to start off kind of reflecting on when we first saw the vampire lovers and, uh, what our first impression was, uh, what do we think of it, and does it hold up today? Uh, and then after that, we'll get into a discussion about the movie, the actors, the director, all little knickknacks and crazy little bits and pieces of what happens. And this is a, a Hammer film full of those types of stories. It'll be interesting tonight. And then uh, after we're said and done, we're going to jump into some feedback. We do have feedback tonight, right, Jeff? Or yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right. Before we get into things, let's take a look at the card. Boink. That's not the right one. Boink. Vampire <laughs> Lovers, 1970, directed by Roy Ward Baker. Uh, written by Tudor Gates, based on uh, Sheridan Lafanu. Is that anywhere close to how you say that? Uh, the story? Uh, yes, actually. I, I was hearing these British people pronounce it and they all said Lefanu. Lefanu. The cast includes Ingrid Pitt, uh, Pipe of Steel, Madeline Smith, Don Adams, Kate O'Mara, Kirsten Lindholm, Peter Cushion, John yeah. Finch, George Cole, Bertie Main, Douglas Wilmer, and Harvey Hall. The production company is Hammer Films. The filming location is Hertfordshire, England, and the filming dates are January 19th through March 4th, 1970. Wow, right, right, uh, wow, that's awesome. Release date was September 3rd, 1970 in the UK, and it hit the US on October 28th. Uh, the budget is 165,000 pounds, or 395, I guess, that's US dollars. 
It's also known as, do you want to take these names, Jeff? Oh, I'll try. At, at one point I had uh, learned the pronunciations, but not today. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I just thought these were funny words. De Dutskus van in Vampire, which in oh. Dutch is a vampire's kiss of death. A Dutskus. <laughs> I like it. I, I looked at that and went, well, this is about a dude's kiss. Let's yeah, see. Where well. else? Yeah. Mm. And uh, Griff de Vampire. Crypt of the Vampires. Ooh, Germany. I like that title too. Of course, we have Vampire Lovers, which is a wonderful title. Mm -hmm. uh, synopsis is seductive vampire Carmela Kynstein and her family target a beautiful and rich, the beautiful and rich families in a remote era of area. Good gosh, of late 18th century Germany. You know, yep. I forgot that it was actually taking place in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> but that makes sense. All right. Um, let's go ahead and get into this. When did we first see this? And what was your first impression? What do you think? And does it hold up today? Who who picked this? I believe this was me. All it right. was Bill. Ah. Well, Bill, you are I up first. Never pass up a chance to do some hammer. And this is this is definitely one of the classic ones that people talk about. So oh, there were three Karnstein films, Vampire Lovers, Lust for a Vampire, and Twins of Evil. Yes. And the first one I saw was almost the last one, Lust for a Vampire, on TV, which was dreadful, terrible. Um, it was a little better actually watching it with you guys when we got to see the whole thing, but not a good film. Then Twins of Evil, there was a videotape out that was able to get that. But Vampire Lovers was never on TV that I ever saw and wasn't easy to find. So it was one of my holy grails. I, I you know, was thinking I'm saving the best for last. When I finally got to see it, um, here's my thing. I don't, th it's twins of evils. My favorite of the three twins of evils. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Cause yeah. of the twins. Um, well, the twins are cute as buttons. Um, Peter Cushing has a great performance as a really complex character. You know, he's both the hero and the villain and it's got a real annoyingly jerk of a vampire, which is my favorite kind of vampire. Um, this would be second, although I think in a lot of ways it's a better film. And here's my controversial opinion. And I want to preface this with, I love Ingrid Pitt. I love Ingrid Pitt. I've, I met Ingrid Pitt at a convention. She was sweet and beautiful, and she had that star quality. You know, it's unmistakable. She should have done more. And so I'm happy that she's in this film. I'm glad that we have this. But she's miscast as Carmilla. She's clearly too old for the part. If you're if you're a fan of the novella where Carmilla is a, a young girl, she's she's no older than the one she preys on. And here in this one, she's clearly older. It's it's like a you know like a school teacher preying on her students. Um, so it doesn't quite it, we don't quite get what we what we should be getting from it. However, that being said, they probably would have just cast some little itty bitty thing and we wouldn't have gotten anything. So she's great in this movie, but if you're a real fan of the book, and there are some big fans of this book, they probably would look at it and say, mm -mm, wrong choice. But she's great in it, and Peter Cushing is great in it. And the victims are fine, too. This definitely Hammer, and this is where Hammer was beginning the big end game flail, where they had to come up with a, a new formula. The old stuff wasn't working anymore. We only had a couple of years. And this one bought them a little bit of time. Because they, you know, they, they had nudity, plenty, copious amounts of nudity. Um, things that were once just suggested were now, now out there in the open. You know, the films were appealing to an older audience now. So it works. It works well. It didn't work for long. Because no matter what <laughs> Hammer did, American stuff could easily outdo it. And no matter how risque Hammer got, our stuff would would push it even further but it's a good film it moves it, it it takes a leisurely pace to get going it you know it's only 90 minutes long but you know the story kind of takes a while to get going there and although it has a memorable ending it's not a terribly exciting one you know things she's our our vampire girl gets dispatched pretty pretty easily and there's no no one it really feels like they're in any danger 
So things just sort of happen there. So there's, there's some things about it. I wish were different, but it's a great film. It's a good film. It's, it's one of the better later hammer ones. It's, it still has those good production values. Although you're starting to maybe see a little bit of the cheapness coming in. Like I just see the scene where the guy's at the bar and we're led to believe there's a lot of people in this bar, but we only see a couple, you know, there things are, things are being done. Mainly the bartender. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We just hear a lot of clinking glasses and people in the background, but I just feel like had this been filmed five or 10 years earlier, we would have seen a lot more. Yeah, Michael Cushing's, Ripper at least have been a new yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sitting at <a> table. <laughs> so uh th- it's definitely this is this is one of the last of the good successful hammers. There were still some good hammers to come out after this one, but a lot of them just did not find their audience. This one did enough to inspire at least two more films, which did not have Ingrid Pitt, and that's that's the loss there. If, if, I wish they could have kept this series going with her, but for whatever reasons that didn't happen. And like I said, there's not enough Ingrid Pitt movies. Well, so, yeah, she was very selective, and yeah, only only we only got like three or and, so horror and films. From other her. than this one and Countess Dracula, I'm not sure any of them had her in a lead role, and she she had lead actress qualities. Mm-hmm. So yep. yep. All right. Um, I saw this. I you know I saw it back in the day somewhere, but I cannot tell you when and where I saw it. And I've only probably seen it once, maybe twice, but certainly I'll, I'll, what I remember are, you know, Ingrid Pitt, mm-hmm. um, Peter Cushion in a general's outfit and, and the ending. Um, and well, and some, maybe some of the uh, more juicier bits, but yeah. uh, I, w- what I found interesting was, and I've always, I've always liked it. I've always considered the best of these three, and one, you know, one of my favorite seventies Hammer films. But I was a little bit more um, critical of it watching it again uh, this week for the show, and I found that the um, <laughs> the first narration, the first opening bit before the credits, right, is oh, it's just excruciatingly bad. <laughs> I I'm I personally do not like narration when um, it, it's a rare film that can actually pull that off correctly. And this one does not. And, and it makes it worse that we get to see some of the scenes again later. Mm-hmm. It's like, what are you know, what's happening? Um, and then the structure of it, which I would imagine is I've never read the source material, but I, I would imagine it's part of the source material is that it's basically we see it happen and then we see it happen again. Yeah. And I don't, I, I did not remember that repetitivity. Is that a new word of it? Um, you know, when I originally saw it back in the day, uh, but it, yeah, it just started, you know, and I don't really understand how they got from one place to the other because it, 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 it just, yeah, there was just some things that I was like, what, what is happening? Um, mm-hmm. uh, but once you get past that, you know, it's, it's the vampire yarn. And I, I was, surprised how very similar it is to the other two films i never really realized that it's basically repeating the story and different kind of twist to it you know the twins are you know the lust part of the the lust of the weird school thing for lust of the vampire right but the uh anger pit is like you said fantastic peter cushion is wonderful not used he's basically bookend right Mm -hmm. the 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 weird vampire hunter that they have is odd yeah. and his and his return is a little weird too um although it makes sense when they when you really think about it because the general goes off and he comes back with him and that you know hey that's what he was doing could have told us a little bit more about that i'd like to have seen that meeting or something right mm-hmm. you know but um but it, it delivers the goods we have plenty of victims doing different you know in different aspects like the uh uh, the what is the name? I'm going to call her a nanny, but she's not a nanny. What is she called? The one that's taking care the of governess. the governess. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Um, you know, the way she's basically used in a different way, and then the, the butler guy who who takes a shine to our 
Marcilla, Carmilla, Marcala yeah. character. <laughs> yeah, marking up the wrong tree, pal. Yeah, it didn't, didn't work for him. So there's a lot. To, there, there's a lot to like about this movie, and my, and my nitpicks, my pickings are nitpickings, um, in hindsight. But um, so I, I still consider it the best of the trio, and it's all because of Inger Pitt and mm. um, and Peter Cushing, and and head lopping. There's a lot of head lopping. There's a lot of head lopping. Yeah, and that's always good. That's always good. Although you're right, I didn't realize that the the conflict at the end, the you know, when you compare it to like horror of Dracula or yeah. Dracula in the UK, you know, that was so cinematic and Peter Cushion leaping across tables and stuff, you know, that you don't get here. They open a coffin and whap. So not not the same, yeah. but still great. Um, we get that great because it lingers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just stays there. All right, just back. Uh, when did I first see this? I saw this four years ago when we did Twins of Evil because sure. I'd read a lot about the cards. Is it the Cardstein, Karnstein, or Karnstein trilogy? Stein. As as uh, Peter Cushing says at one point, Karnstein, Castle Karn. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Karnstein trilogy. So um, I wanna, I watched them all before we did Twins of Evil. Um, just so I'd have that under my belt and would know what you guys were talking about. Um, and by the way, yeah, we did that. That was episode 110, uh, in February, 2020. And then we just did lust for a vampire episode 196 that came out, uh, in August, 2023. Um, so you could check those out, but, uh, I love this movie. I love this movie. I love the things Doc described as faults. <laughs> I, love the, I love the things that Bill described as faults. Um, you know, the only thing we know about Carmilla's age is that they say she's the Countess's daughter. She's sure. obviously too old to be, the, at least the way that the Countess looks, she's too old to be that Countess's daughter. So I'm not going to, I didn't worry at all about her age because it's, we don't know her age. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, um, yeah, they pair her up with the 18 year old, 20 year olds. Uh, but, um, I just didn't, didn't get a thing with that. And, and not, not saying that's not how it is in the story. Uh, but there is a lot of stuff in there that's similar to the story. Of course, there's, uh, characters eliminated and characters combined and stuff like that. But there's a, there's a lot of, Similarity. I loved that introduction, Doc. <laughs> oh, loved, did you really? Oh, I my. did. I okay. thought okay. that whole well, the way they shot that with the in the shroud and the yeah. slow motion and the mist was just beautiful. I just I just thought it was beautiful. Um and then and then the, the poor guy at the pub goes outside to piss and <laughs> <laughs> that's all for him. And uh so anyway, and then they introduce this idea of the shroud, which I thought was kind of cool, but it it doesn't follow through. You know, they yeah they mention it at the end about finding her shroud, but they never do, um, unless she maybe that's what she was laying on or what was on top of. I don't know. Anyway, um, Ingrid Pitt is a force to be reckoned with in this mm -hmm. movie. I just think she's absolutely incredible, even. And, and the, the nuances to her relationships with her victims, you know, some of the victims were in her way and she dispatches them with savagery. <laughs> and then there's the girls though, that are, she's sort of falling in love with them herself, mm -hmm. uh, with Laura and especially Emma. And she just, she cannot handle uh, the funeral, that thing that I thought yeah. that was great too. That's a great uh, scene in the novella. Yeah. The shots where she's, uh, walking into the mist and just disappears. I, I just thought that was really well done. It didn't look like a gimmick. It looked, uh, really smooth and the amount of mist and fog there. Crystal, Crystal would have loved it. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's just, there's a, uh, a bevy, I don't want to say bevy, that might be, there's just a lot of beautiful women in this movie 
that I think all do a good job at playing their the parts that they're handed. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the young ones seem a little bit shallow, but yeah, what the hell? You know, huh. um, who was I thinking of? Who is the woman that plays the governess? Oh, that's Kate O'Mara. I thought she was yeah. great. Yes. Um, and the, several of the characters have to go from being. I'm this concerned, good natured person, and now I'm under her spell. And now I've yeah. become and there's no real obvious thing. She 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 has control of them, and all you see is a, a slight change in, in their demeanor. You know, they seem just a little bit flat. Um and go right. from I'm the guy that's making sure we have the garlic flowers and the cross in Emma's bedroom, and now I'm the guy that tells them to take it out. Yeah. So they don't anyway. go full Renfield, but they're obviously bewitched. Yeah. And and it, it, I don't know. I, I just, bewitched I just enjoyed the hell out of it. And I really think some of the choices that, uh, uh, Ingrid Pitt made were, were mm-hmm. really interesting and really cool. Yeah. There's two basic scenarios that happened twice, but the thing that got me was I, as I'm watching them the second time that they're happening, I'm thinking, you know, first there was uh, Laura, who was Peter Cushing's character's niece, mm-hmm. and then oh, so the niece, not the Emma. daughter, huh? Yeah, yeah he, was she was niece. a niece. Oh, and I then there's was some... Emma, who's the other guy's daughter, Morton. All I ever hear him called is Mister Morton, Roger Morton, I guess. Uh, so I don't know. I, I'm I'm going on at length, but I just there's so many things about this that I like, and I. I liked the way they repeated that. The thing I liked about it was I'm going, now, wait a minute. I had to think this through. I mean, aren't these guys neighbors? They didn't know. Yeah, well, yeah. no, these are, these are like out, you know, there's miles right. between well, neighbors. They're neighbors, but they're not like in a neighborhood. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so, so watching that happen and watching her repeat a lot of that same stuff with slight variations, uh, I, I found to be really interesting. I didn't, see it mm-hmm. as repetitive maybe if i've watched it a bunch of times i would but um it I, seems like I, it's I a bad it. plan on the part of her whoever the man in black and the the woman who played her mom or aunt did to, well, you know that this is going to fall apart but i think i think the idea was they put her into a rich home and then that gives her the opportunity to prey on the local people and nobody gives a rat's ass what happens to the local people the problem is that carmilla keeps getting romantically mm-hmm. involved with the girls that she's living with and that kind of scotches the plan then they got to start over again and that's keep her, dreaming that's about her, cats that's her tragic flaw is that she <laughs> she can't help but unlike dracula who has uh, as near as we can tell no feelings for anybody in in the novel at least yes you know she really seems to be she she does love these girls the problem is because she's a vampire she can't help but destroy them and that's her tragedy. That's her sad. Well, and that makes her a more interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, far more interesting character because you you almost feel a little sad for her at some point. I did anyway. Yeah, when she's talking about it. She had yeah feelings for these people, and then you know if you ask you know if you asked her about the old ones, she'd get mad because that it brings it up to her. I think that's why the, the funerals bothered her. You know, she doesn't seem to have the ability uh, to turn other people into vampires though, or, or she, she didn't, she failed at least. And yeah, she also I, walks around I, the daylight. So there that's, is that's a cool odd... thing. I like that. She walks in the daylight because that's also true of the Dracula in the novel. Yeah. Right. Light, that's a, that's a, uh, I guess the sun thing was a, was a, uh, thing dreamt up by uh Murnau in Nosferatu. Mm. Is that the Holly Holly well I guess not even Molly in this term. Um, they don't want to be they don't want to be in the they can stand the sunlight, but like she's she sits in the shade. Right. right. They're weakened and then there's sunlight. a great line where she's like I knew I was I was gonna say this when we started off, you know, it was sort of like the Bella Lugosi line. I don't drink wine, but for her it was like I don't drink white wine yeah <laughs> it does drink wine in this red one wine, yeah. but i don't but red wine and i and i don't eat she doesn't, i don't think we ever see her eat she's mm. just because i'm not hungry. hungry she's always not hungry mm-hmm. um all right before we move on i i just i made a comment earlier that's been sticking with me and i said that uh ingrid pitt was like in three horror films there's at least five four mm. four in the 70s one in the 60s that i I'm not really know much about, but we'll get into Sound that here. And, yeah, we'll get into that here just a little bit. But I know there's 
certain listeners that are um, um, probably yelling at me for the past 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> but we'll get into all that. We'll get we'll clear that up here in just a bit. Uh, but Jeff, do we want to do uh, before we get into the posters and everything? Want to do taglines? We should probably do that. So you know, now is the time where we usually do normally uh, <laughs> this thing. Da, da, da. Taglines <laughs> with Chad, <laughs> but alas, but Chad isn't here. Oh, Chad. Oh, Chad. Yeah. I will um, step into Ch Chad's shoes. Whoa. Somebody. I, I'm, not, I am not worthy, but I will do it anyway. All right. Here are the taglines. It's probably because um, he saw how many of them there were. He might have been. He's like, I'm not saying this. And I, I, right. I didn't even go looking. I mean, there's so many posters of this. I, yeah. I, I'm i sure we could have come up with another dozen tagline. Mm -hmm. this, this is plenty. All right, up number first. I like this one. She's the new whore from Hammer. And you got to say horror, right? Okay. That's right. Horror. Yes. Beautiful tempest. Temp tempest. Excuse Easy me. You to say. Or bloodthirsty monster. Absolutely. I think that Venn diagram is just one big circle. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's like overlaps. A little bit of both. Uh, yep. uh, next. A blood-stained tale of terror and torture. I don't think it was any torture, but um, okay. Uh, even the lifeless can love. Even the dead can desire. That's good. Mm, that's next, a good one. That's yeah, a good as, one. as is the next. A tale of unholy bloodlust. Ooh. <laughs> is there any next other one. kind? Mm. Of bloodlust. Holy know. blood. Yeah, holy bloodlust. That, yeah, kind of. Mm. Caution, not for the mentally immature. <laughs> what? The mentally I, immature. I, I, mentally yeah, immature. So if you giggle Maybe teenagers who are in, in it for the yeah, nudity. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear any giggling from the back seat. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Uh, even the dead can love. We said, we said that. Yeah, one. I think we said that. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, if you dare taste the deadly passion of the blood nymphs, Ooh. there's Is a title for you. Uh, there you go, Bill. You can make blood a movie nymph. called The Blood Nymphs. I like that. I do. Uh, an erotic nightmare of tormented lusts that throb in the headless undead bodies. Ooh, wow. <laughs> what kind of movie um, were they watching? I, 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 I didn't see any uh, throbbing. <laughs> I didn't see any <laughs> less throbbing in the headless yeah. bodies. <laughs> Once they were headless, <laughs> throbbing. Maybe wrong. my eyes were elsewhere. I don't know. <laughs> no throbbing. No throbbing allowed. Um, the last one. Carmilla is really queen of the lesbian them. Wow, that's just laying it right out there on yeah, the line. Yeah, let's just huh? lay it out there. Yeah. yeah, you know what you're getting. All right. Well, there it is. Those were the taglines. So, and that's been taglines <laughs> with Chad, as played by Doctor Rotten, Doctor Von Rotten, as we call Doctor Von Rotten, Doctor Von Rotten. Rotten. <laughs> Von Rotten. Oh, jeez. That doesn't work. Hey, All right, right. <laughs> I've I've been waiting for this because this 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 particular movie has some great posters and we oh, have yeah. uh, oh, yeah. a few to show you. So let's, let's stop them. We have to get the taglines out of the way because well the taglines are on the posters. On the so board. now we can do the posters. Boink. There's that, if you dare. Chase. That is <laughs> such a different poster for Hammer. You know, it, it look it looks more like uh, like a Mario Bava, uh, a little bit of. I mean, that guy looks like Hercules there, and and a little bit of Franco in that as well. Doesn't look remotely like like Ingrid, but it's a great poster. I know. Where are the guys all tied up? There's no guys tied up. Oh, there's, there's absolutely not. <laughs> Nothing remotely like this appears in the movie. There's your con. There, your caution. Uh, this is also R rated R, which I oh, guess that makes sense yeah. because a lot of the other ones were either G or PG. Yeah, well, well they, they, they are yeah, this much nudity. They were GP yeah. back then. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this much nudity gets you an R for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. And and uh, even the just the chopping off the heads as graphic as it was probably would have been pushing the PG oh. into R territory. And there was mm -hmm. no PG thirteen, of course. Yeah. 
And there was there really wasn't too many PGs. Actually, it was really just. There was something. Uh, what did I just read? Not, about not until had, the seventies. Later in the seventies, they had just revised the ratings in England, and they had mm-hmm. moved the X certificate from, I think it was sixteen to eighteen, and then they had a new rating for fourteen. Hmm. And I'm 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 feeling like this one came in right at that time. Well, certain. the English were always cooler with nudity than we were, and they still are. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of stuff that they the the uh, what, what am I? What's the word? That censors were trying to hmm. hit them up with. You know, well, I remember watching like British television uh, when PBS was showing Monty Python, oh, yeah. and they just had nudity. I'm like, bah, yeah. nah. <laughs> uh, check out these three posters. I love the artwork on the top one, yeah. And, but the bottom it's one, pretty? I guess, is a is a uh, like a is, newspaper guess, a newspaper one. Yeah, it's fantastic. But it doesn't belong for this movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although it's trying to do the scene where she gets the butler guy, right? I guess. Doesn't look anything like her, but it's, it is a cool. I really like some of some of the black and white newspaper um posters that they had that were nothing like the actual posters. That could be pretty cool <laughs> too. Yeah. You know what? I, I I don't know. I'm gonna share this. I'm gonna embarrass myself. I don't know. Maybe you guys did it too. Did you guys take the Sunday paper and cut out all the the big um, posters that were, you know, the, the newspaper ads and collect them. I did. Yes. Not. I, did. I did. You did. I did it too. And you, you had those like the little the sticky paper things. You yes. put them in there. Okay. Yes. I want, I, I, I'm not alone. I'm not I alone. Would, I would love to find that. I'm, I'm sure at some point it got tossed out and probably all the ads had crumbled away to wherever it is. Falling newspapers. Out, falling yeah. Out, yeah. But yes, I absolutely did that. Um, I did too. I just loved the Sunday paper. Uh, I had to get the style section from my dad. And I thought that was probably the closest it would ever be to me actually seeing some of these films because they weren't coming up. <laughs> I know. It felt that way, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. But it, there was like, there's films that I still haven't seen that I had those cutouts for. But uh, anyway, that's here's some four. Just one on top. That's, that's beautiful. Well, both of them are really cool. The bottom one is got, you know, a, a great interpretation of the finale. Yeah. Clearly, yeah, and those those two at least show actual scenes, shots from the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I love that top one. Ooh. Beautiful. And of course, we have the the, the source material, the original, which which I have never read. Have you read it, Bill? Yeah, it sounds like you have. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that, Jeff, that middle. Yeah. I, 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 I have, but it's been a while. I I think some of the illustrations here were if not in the original edition pretty shortly afterwards. Now this, and this actually predates Dracula. This was published before Dracula was. In the really? Book. Yeah. There's always been some discussion oh, yeah, on right how much, how much Dracula was influenced by, like by Carmilla. 50 mm. years. I don't, I don't think it was that much, but I, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I thought that middle shot there, that middle, uh, I've seen different versions of that was actually in the oh, movie right. that that scene where you know we sort of pan over to the woman sit, sleeping in the bed and we just see Carmilla's hand coming in and Ingrid oh, yeah. Pitt did, she did some marvelous stuff with her hands where she's like just I don't know if she was a dancer or or what but you know she she had some really cool kind of remind me of Lugosi did that too mm-hmm. you know this mesmerizing very artistic very poetic hand movement there yeah, so Carmilla was uh, published in 1871 or 72, so I believe that would be about 25 years, isn't Dracula? Yeah, late. 1896. But I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm, I'm feeling uh, very illiterate there. now. <laughs> I don't know. And I guess they were both. They were 1897 both, uh, for Dracula. Okay, there you when, go. When was Varney the Vampire? That was before all of them, right? Uh, yeah, it was. So uh, here is just a, a, a smattering of the movies that have been influenced by Carmilla to one degree or another. Some of them extremely loosely, like Vampire and Blood Spattered Bride. Some of them much more literal. And then some of them like the Moth Diaries kind of modern updating on that on the premise. So she's she's got She's got a cult following. Mm-hmm. Um, Carmilla. I, 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 I got to say, let's scare Jessica to death again. Just to... Okay. Oh, you yeah. can do that. Yeah. 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 Um, but I mean, Carmilla's become kind of shorthand for any 
female vampire, especially if there's even a hint of lesbianism in it. Yeah. Um, and I, I've seen a, a, a lot of folks seem to want to make Carmilla something of a heroine, which she most certainly is not, at least in the original story. She's a predator. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's in some ways a tragic predator. You get, you do get the sense. And that's why I'm saying Ingrid Pitt was a little old for the role in the novella. She's just like these girls and she has the same kind of sort of childlike quality, um, you know, girl crushes and just the loneliness and the sadness that she will always be this age. She will never actually become, you know, a woman. Um, well, in the novella she, and yeah, uh, you know what? Let me look this up. Go ahead. Keep talking. No, I was, and, and of course, then interview with a vampire took that to its even a greater um, extent. With uh, was it Claudia, the, the mm -hmm. young girl? Yeah, you know. So it's it's a cool it's a cool premise and everything. And it, it, there is something about her that has uh, resonated. People do respond to her. She's uh, you know kind of you've got Dracula, and you've got Carmilla. And these these two seem to be our our classic archetypes for vampires. There's certainly would been way more Dracula than than Carmilla, but she she holds her own. She does indeed. She does indeed. So the uh, the gravestone for Mercala said fifteen twenty two to fifteen forty six, so she would have been twenty two. Hmm. So. Yeah, Ingrid Pitt was older than that. Although they they just really don't talk. Well, about you know, it's not it's show. not even that. I mean, she certainly doesn't look like. Well, I don't think she acts. Her, no, yeah, no, either. she's in her she's, she's in her thirties. Yeah, I, that's the thing. It would compare to the actresses that she's with, who really look they they could. I mean, I think they they they're supposed to be eighteen or so, but they could be even younger. She just seems so much more mature now. Part of that kind of works because even if she did look. 18 she should be acting differently she's hundreds of years old mm -hmm. so you know and look, i'm not gonna complain i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hop into a time machine go back in time and say don't hire ingrid pitt no, that'd be insane <laughs> i should be beaten to death but uh yeah you know if you're a stickler for the novel there's you know, get a life <laughs> there you Love go. me some Ingrid Pitt. Oh, we've, got, we've got a slide coming up that actually shows her and Peter together at the convention in New York, where I met them. Met them. Oh. I stood in line and got their autograph and tried not how, to. How old were you? Um, fourteen. 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 Wow. And this beautiful Ingrid Pitt. Okay, so not only was she beautiful. And she was, and she was even more beautiful in real life. And Peter Cushing was also there. And and you just the kindness. The only person I could even compare him to is Doug Jones. That oh, you know, wow, nice. there are people who just they exude it like like a force. Um, she was so sweet. She made made you feel like she actually cared how to spell Billy, uh, because in England she told me, you know, we usually spell it with an I E, and I'm like, Dar! you know, I, I don't know what. Like that's that's fascinating. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it would look like a Tex Avery cartoon. Um, yeah, that was that was an experience. Yeah, I met I met her later on, and the there was a what was it a famous monster convention or that's where I saw them. Famous well, no, monster. this this was different. This was in um, it was in DC. Oh, okay. I'm trying to remember what kind of convention it was, but it it uh, Michael Ripper was there as well. Oh wow. And uh, I met her, but I was, I, even though I was older, I was still very shy. And she insisted, insisted we take a picture. And I was like <laughs> almost too shy to get in there to get a picture. Um, but she thought, oh, come over here and get a yeah. picture. And I was grown ass. So <laughs> I think she, but she was, happened. but she was, she was, she was very gorgeous. And, and she and, and Peter seem really fond of each other. You know, they were sitting next there to each other. And, and I see those behind the scenes photos that you were showing there that they seem to have a, a genuine affection for each other, but how many movies were other than this one? Were they in any other movies together? None that, none that, not, are not, I don't think they were in the same scenes. Well, she um, talked about, uh, but they were both in the house of drip blood, but they weren't in the same. Oh, but not, yeah. 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 She talked about meeting, uh, uh, Cushing's wife. Oh, and how lovely she was and how the two of them, spoke mm. russian together mm. wow and that peter cushing was just so enamored of the fact that 
he was somebody that his wife could speak Russian to. Oh well, I mean that, that yeah, having that bonding that would that probably meant a lot to Cushing. Hmm. Uh, well, let's talk about Roy Ward Baker, uh, the director for a bit. Is a probably a name that you've seen on many horror titles. Here are a few of them. There are some gold nuggets in that pile right there. There, I I would say that even the worst one in there is a one worthy of Hammer, mm-hmm. and or or um, Amicus, as some of them are Amicus films. But um, the Quater Mass, Quater Mass. I'm going to say it slowly. Mm-hmm. And the Pit is, I think, Bill. You and I were both saying that's. Oh. It's it's Absolutely a top, our favorite. Top oh, my. It's it's a film I'd like to see remade because my only criticism is that this this film that film has such big ideas, but it had such a small budget. Um, nevertheless, it's it's great. I just think it is something that if a talented director writer were to get a hold of it and actually put some passion into it, using what we have now, we could have a film that would just knock people on their ass. But they'd also probably screw it up. So let's just stick with. What I, we have I know to, it's it's kind of like lightning in a bottle that movie because yeah. there there are some scenes in there like of the the, the grasshoppers running around right. that you know work only in context now. Yeah. <laughs> but but the the actual life size grasshopper things, the big ones that they mm-hmm. pull out of the thing that start melting, are absolutely fabulous. And the ship and everything, but we don't need to talk about that film. But um, I love Asylum. Seven yeah. Golden Vampires is a favorite. Um, I think we've covered it works all better the- than it should. The only one we haven't done Scars. We haven't done Scars. Yeah, and and I remember not particularly liking Scars of Dracula, but it has been so long, and I mm-hmm. saw it on TV where I'm sure it was diced to ribbons. Right, I did too. I saw it on I think one Halloween week where they were showing all the mm-hmm. hammer films and I caught it then, but it's, uh, it, it's also one that's the hardest one to find. Yeah. For whatever reason, it might be because I, it's so torture. Maybe. I think, uh, there was a time when you guys first covered that. I think I had to buy that as a DVD, but I think now it's out in Blu-ray. Hmm. Scars. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, not. Yeah. Scars too, but I was thinking asylum. You're talking about scars. And that's the yeah. thing. You're, we're also kind of, you know, when you're when it's films that haven't had a good release and don't seem to be streaming, you're kind of stuck with whatever version you saw on TV, and that can be really deceptive. I remember thinking mm-hmm. Evil of Frankenstein looked like a piece of crap, but then I saw like a good DVD release, and it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You know, really, really nice looking. So you know, you wonder. That's why I'm I'm always happy when we, you know go out a film that I haven't seen in a while because sometimes going back there it exceeds your memory. Yeah. Or when we'll we discover a new one, right? Right. So, yeah. But we yeah, Scar- Scars of Dracula's got to hit the scene some point or we'll we'll go out and find it. But so it's it is the hardest one. Yeah. yeah. He definitely was good with the Port Mondews. Um and he was willing to try some unusual stuff like Dr. Jekyll, Sister Hyde, Seven Golden Vampires. You know, those, those films are successful to varying degrees, but they're trying something different. I mean, Seven Golden Vampires, I'm sure a lot of people just think it's the silliest thing on earth. I love it. it. It's because it is, but it's awesome. Yeah. It's the yeah. best silly possible. He it also did He also did Moon Zero 2, which is a Hammer sci-fi film. Yeah, I'm not too crazy about Moon Zero. No, nah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, and now the screaming starts, which we covered. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and and others as well. Not the you know Monster Club, which I'm surprised you didn't put on here because it has all the people in it. It does, it does. But it's it didn't really come together as well as yeah. you'd want it to. Um, but yeah, he I, and he directs the hell out of this. It's, it's really good. Like you said, there's some wonderful composed shots yeah. in this film that he did that, uh, you know, really make it stand out. Um, and he, he surely knows how to frame Ingrid Pitt. That's for certain. Yeah. Cause when she's on screen, she's, she's the thing you look at. <laughs> she's like commands the screen. Mm-hmm. Part of the problem with hammer films for a lot of the directors is that they're all working in the shot, in my opinion, in the shadow of Terrence Fisher, mm-hmm. who just was a master. And, and is, you know, if I make my list of my top five favorite directors, 
There's Mario Bava, of course, but there's also Terrence Fisher. And, um, you know, he, toward the end, he just, they weren't able to use him for various reasons other than Frankenstein, the monster from hell. I think Roy War Baker deserves a lot of credit for maybe not reaching quite that level, but definitely acquitted himself very well with these films. Well, I mean, historically looking back, he made pictures that people remember. Mm -hmm. You know, you, mm -hmm. you remember these films, uh, especially, you know, for us, us 70s fans, you know, the, like mm -hmm. you said, the Portman do the, the anthology films. And, you know, we, we have a, a special place in our hearts for Seven Golden Vampires. And yeah. Just because of. And also, <laughs> and also to, you know, to Baker's credit, he's working with a very diminished hammer. He's working yes. where the budgets are being cut. The deals with the American distributors are beginning to dry up. He didn't have the resources that they had in their golden age. And you could say that he comparatively made the best of it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he really didn't, you know, well, come compare, compare uh, vampire lovers to lust for a vampire. Although <laughs> I will say watching it with you guys, I did not hate it as much as I remember. There, hating there you go. There you go. Except for that yeah. damn song. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about the star of the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, because the queen she is absolutely gorgeous, and those uh paintings down below, um, isn't that beautiful? Especially, isn't that Gogo's on the right, right? Yes, I think, it, I think it's, I think, well, definitely on the right, or is it on the left? Um, might be both of them, um, but definitely on the right. That's one of my favorite paintings of all time, is that, and that's from House of Drip Blood, I guess. But she's, oh, listen, she's pretty and she's also kind of scary. She's pretty scary. She's, yeah, come on. Yeah. 14 years old and I'm talking to this woman. You know, that that leaves a mark. Mm, it does. Leaves, <laughs> leaves a mark. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So we were talking about her horror films and Sound of Horror is one that I keep forgetting uh, about. Uh, uh, what What is yeah. it about? The, what, what is well, that film? Let me tell you. Okay. So you want to make a movie where there's a cave with like diamonds in it, but there's also a dinosaur that will kill you. If you try to get the diamond, there's a dinosaur in there. Dinosaur yeah. In there. Yeah. Unfortunately they didn't have a pot to piss in as far as budgets go. What do you do? What do you do? Well, here you go. It's, did I mention it's an invisible dinosaur? Oh, yes, that's yeah. right. It is an invisible dinosaur. The oh, only thing class. you hear oh, is the sound of horror as it tears you apart. <laughs> the camera swings around wildly. And I remember watching this on like the 430 movie. I'm like, whoever sold this idea to the producers must have balls the size of a Chinese gong because I, I, I would just, I would feel ashamed to go in there as like, uh, how are we going to afford this? Well, he's invisible. <laughs> I think it's a Spanish movie too, right? It is. It is, so, and it's yeah. got it's got uh, Ingrid Pitt and Soledad Miranda, who was in a lot of Jess Franco movies and was also quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really remember much about it other than the Invisible Dinosaur. That just cracks yeah, me I've, up. I've like never the, never seen it. The chutzpah, the oh, gall. Yes. Um, of course, Countess Dracula is another great Hammer film that she's in. I, well, I don't know. Is it great? But I don't know. The character is. We'll have to find out sometime. We'll have to do yeah, it. Yeah, I've yes, seen it. And I've seen it more than once. It'll be interesting to see it again. Uh, House of Drip action. Blood. Yeah. House of Drip Blood was is a fun, fun uh, uh, anthology film. Uh, and of course, Wicker Man is a, a classic. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, tried and true, right? Um, and of course, vampire lovers. Uh, but she also, I think, I think she's also outside of horror. She's known as Heidi and <laughs> where eagles there, right? Mm -hmm. Is, is yes. that a? I'm going to look. Is that a uh, Clint, Clint Eastwood film? It is. Yes, it yes. is the Clint Eastwood film. Clint Eastwood and, and, and Richard Burton. Richard Burton. Yeah. yeah, she was in Wild. She was East in too, uh, right? a couple of uh, episodes of Smiley People too. One of the. You know, it was I. I was shown here on Mystery, I think, or as a as a British series mm -hmm. um, from the Jean Le Carre. No. Yeah, and of course she was in. Uh, she was in some Doctor Who's and uh, and yeah. this, in eighty seventy two and eighty four. Crazy. Um, and she was a writer as well. Oh, nice. Uh, of course, she was in. Uh, well, so she's just the voice, right? In Octopussy. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if I ever knew that. A mistress, huh? And she was an there's, extra, an uncredited extra in Doctor Savago. There's just there's a strange gap where, um, from like '88 to 2000, she's gone. She's not. She's not doing things. And and I don't know. And then then she seems to come back and and do a few things up until when she passed. It's um. I don't know what it was. I know she she had health issues. Um, she didn't she didn't die at a young age, but you know, way too soon. But she had certain health issues. Uh, maybe she might have. I don't know. I don't know what it was all about. But mm -hmm. it's to me, it's a it's a loss. I mean, obviously, I take it personally because I was fourteen years old and I was talking to her. Um, but I'm telling you, if you ever had, even if you weren't fourteen, there are some there. Are, you meet actors and actresses. Some of them are just like regular folks, and um, I've always had good experience with them. But you do meet a few that have that star quality. There, and and I don't know what it is. I don't know. There's something in the way they carry. It. Even if they're not on, even if they're not putting on a show, there's just something that you can't take your eyes off them. It's, there's there's a charisma. There's a something there. Cushing had it. She had it. Um, so the two of them together it was like you know you could just feel the star power in that room even those of us i hadn't seen a single film she had ever made when i met her you just saw her in the pictures from the magazine yeah yeah, I, yeah she was in famous monsters all the time i mean yeah mm -hmm. um, so do you know this you know this story about her uh in the concentration camp as a child no, no it's not awful yeah well it's a trivia thing in here and, and you know assuming it's true but i did hear people talk about it on the uh in interviews I believe it was she and her mom. Um, she and her mom were imprisoned for three years uh, at a work yeah. camp. Not they were non-Jews, but uh, at one one day they were taken into the forest to be shot, and her oh and her mother God. managed to escape. But doesn't say anything about wow. about how, and they were rescued by partisans. Um, wow! And they lived lived through the last year of the war there. At at the end, they reunited with their older sister and their father. But says her father was a broken man. Um, it's 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 hard to uh, it's hard to imagine how anyone comes out of that not broken and yet mm. you know, oof. Uh, um, human spirit. Well, yeah. Now I believe yeah, she, she she may she not have been, been like Jewish. Five years old, five to yeah, five to six when this because happened. she was born in thirty seven. So yeah, yeah, she may not have been Jewish, but her parents were both of Jewish descent. So uh, that's probably how they ended up there. Um, mm, horrible, horrible. Mm. All right, let's go on to Maddie Smith or Madeline Smith. Excuse me. Um, what what character she play? I've already forgotten. Emma. She, she plays, plays Emma Morton. Emma Morton. She's the second one, right? The second household. Yes. She looks Morton's like she's half character. Ingrid's age. I mean, she she's got that little doll quality, those big soulful eyes, and she they cast her brilliantly because she is the epitome of innocence. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she is, and she even when. <laughs> the character, uh, you know, Carmela is being quite obvious. She's mm -hmm. she's oblivious to what she's really Whoop. saying. Yeah, it just goes over her head until she, you know, physically does it, and <laughs> she's like, "Oh, eyes <laughs> real big." Like, oh, the contrast. Was the contrast on the bottom. This, yeah, yeah, contrast on the bottom. You know, she looks like I have no idea what's going on. Carmela looks like the cat that caught the canary <laughs> exactly that's a great description of it too guys she was in live and let die hmm. mm -hmm. the intro part and jeff what's the story of uh what the producers did to this poor girl well she she says this and there's two different interviews uh that i saw and in one of them she says that they called her up a couple weeks before shooting was supposed mm -hmm. to start and told her she didn't quite have the right body. It was too slender. And I think they actually said she wasn't busty enough um, in, in some sort of veiled language. Mm -hmm. And so she uh, chowed down on, uh, I didn't understand the first word she said. I thought maybe it was muesli, but yogurt for like a couple of weeks. And 
when you see her in the film, she's obviously not slender <laughs> or bust and or or uh, yeah. And didn't they also tell her that the nudity was only for the Japanese? Oh, right, right, right. That was the other one. That was yeah. yeah. That the nude there was going to be some nude scenes, but that was for the Japanese market. <laughs> yeah. You know that was a big that was a big thing. Famous Monsters was kind of infamous for claiming that when they made a Hammer film, they would make like three versions. Mm -hmm. A tame one for England, a more risque one for America, and then one for the Japanese market that was just insane. So, like in in the Curse of Frankenstein, the monster had three eyes for the Japanese. I believe that horse crap up until <laughs> the end. That was well. I, I wonder about these uh, the the uh, producers. This was right when Anthony Hines retired, I think, and mm -hmm. and uh, Harry Fine and Michael Style were. Seemed to be just a little shady to me. I mean, mm -hmm. they flat out said the key to a good horror movie. They had a list of stuff, but included in there was beautiful women in nude scenes in order yeah. to make a good horror movie. So, yeah, and their their films display that. So, well, and they you know they had this deal with uh, American International on this movie, and they like already had already approved uh, Lust for a Vampire. And started working on the script a week into the shoot of this one. Wow. Mm, and nice. I think it was Michael Carreras even shopped a poster, you know, in, a, in America. And American International didn't didn't sign on for it. So <laughs> I, I don't know if they didn't, you know, there's a lot of reasons it could be, and I don't know what those are, but uh just some of the stuff uh Roy Ward Baker, I, I also read somewhere that he was suspicious that they had shot, come in and shot more nude scenes when he wasn't around. Interesting. <laughs> I wonder if they did. I wonder if they he did. didn't actually say it happened, but I think there was stuff in the movie that he didn't remember shooting. Yeah. You know, there's there's that, there's two scenes. One is, uh, there's the one where the, where, where the, uh, the first, the first, that opening scene where she pushes up against him and her breast touches that cross mm -hmm. on, on the guy's thing. And it, it's like, it's like almost a full screen close up of a nipple and a cross, you know? Mm -hmm. And then later on, there's a scene where the doctor comes in and he's looking at Laura, the Pippa Steele character, and he's got that earpiece that. Mm -hmm. To listen to her heart like uh like uh, cushing used in uh what was it revenge of frankenstein um and he pulls her top down yeah. hey, to expose her no breasts reason. while he's listening and then well, we get a close up yeah. of that you know i'm, I'm like yeah. gratuitous uh, there's it's uh, i mean there's uh, and then of course the nude scene with uh ingrid pitt in the in the bathtub i i'm not yeah. i'm trying to think you know trying to think what's gratuitous and what isn't you know it, it, it that i can just, imagine almost yeah. all those scenes being shot without nudity right with, that it doesn't that one doesn't come across as that gratuitous i think part of it is that ingrid pitt has said she was fine with nudity yeah she, she was really natural with it. She, you know she didn't have any tan lines <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go there was, maybe that was, was makeup i don't know maybe. there was a story she told that i guess some of these sleazy producers had missed the uh one of the yes. nude scenes and everything and they were quite downtrodden so as she walked by him wearing a negligee she just hey boys and gave him a little flash and they walked away happy so there you go <laughs> it, uh, well, it did bother this young lady she was not happy about yeah, this right. and, and you know they kind of yeah. tricked her just, well she was she was also in Taste the Blood of Dracula, another Hammer film. And, and, are you waiting for me to say it? Yes, Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Uh, and she plays Sarah. Theater of Blood, did you mention that? I have not. Theater of Blood. Oh, so no, that's, was, not, that's not a Hammer mute, film. She was the mute woman in, yep. uh, oh, good. Yeah. She was very, yeah, absolutely. Those eyes, I should have recognized those eyes. No, I don't see Theater of Blood, isn't it here? Oh, what did I, did I copy that from the wrong place? Oh, no, there's a seer blood. Yep. Okay. Seer blood. There it is. Skipped right over it. These Skipped people right all are. I mean, I'll, I'll wait for you to keep going here. And then I'll, oh, I'm done. I'm done. 
Good. Well, I mean, other other women, other other characters in this. It's interesting all the stuff they were in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll go to Kate O'Mara, who is gorgeous, gorgeous, <laughs> and as well. That, that picture on the bottom. So I had one of those, you know, big coffee table book horror things and everything. Again, oh, pictures yeah. of films I was never going to be able to see. That one right there. I was like, wow, she is so beautiful. I can't wait to see this movie. Unfortunately, it's horror. Frankenstein, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. She's good in it. She's fine. But and that's David Prowse there as Frankenstein. Boy, is that movie a waste of time. That well, they were tr trying to reinvent themselves and yeah. Uh, they realized their mistake pretty quick, I think. Although no they well, no cushing, no sale. Well, they were trying to make the other guy a, a cushing. Yeah, they keep trying, guys. And that was the same year as this, 1970. Yeah. So, um, and since this one filmed in, well, I don't know when House of Frankenstein filmed, so, but we got, we'll have to cover it at some point. She does a really good job in this. I mean, yeah. As the governess, she's sort of a teacher, and she's, I don't know. I, I, I just felt like you could, you could see the relationship she had with, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Madeline Smith's character. And she's the one character who seems to willingly fall for Carmilla's charms. Well, as it changes, I, I mean, I think I think Mil, I, I looking at the body language, I thought Carmilla was sucking her in, you know, mm. was reeling her in, mm -hmm. gave her that that brooch and placed it right on her breasts, and mm -hmm. you know, yep. Well, she she seemed to have that effect on uh, a number of people in that house. <laughs> well, on the, on the scene at the end where she comes out after being stuck in yeah. the room for a while, uh, she's mm -hmm. absolutely crazed, mm -hmm. uh, like a like a like a. Take me with you. Take me with you. Carmilla fix. You know, that's really unfortunately. Carmilla likes them when they play hard to get. So mm -hmm. the fact this this one woman who gives herself willingly, eh, no interest. Yeah. Um, she was also in Corruption with Peter Cushion, which uh, I believe is another Hammer film, right? Or is it? Is that a Hammer film? Or is I think so. I think, yeah. I, should, I feel like I should know this. It's not great. Not It's not a well-known one. No. Well, it's not a well-liked one. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it's Titan. Titan International. Yeah. Which is not Hammer. So there's a lot of Hammer fans out there that are like... How dare, how dare you? How dare you? But Titan International. But because of Peter Cushing, you think that's what you think of first, right? So I fell into that trap. He 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 plays such a despicable character. But the one thing we'll have to do corruption. One time. Well, what time, what year was that? Sixty-eight. Oh well, uh, you got to see the poster for that because they they say this is not a woman's picture. Therefore, no woman will be admitted alone to see this film. We're like, what? Really? Yeah. Boy, try to get away with that now. Oh I, I doubt God. that they turned anyone away from buying a ticket for this film, no matter what. But okay, <laughs> no doubt. And they even the poster even calls it a. No, no woman will be admitted alone to see this super schlock. Oh, super shock! I thought it said schlock, oh, but maybe schlock. no. Super uh, schlock would be uh, awesome. They had it right the first time. Oh my God, that would be you. You should have written that. That would be much better. Yeah. Um, uh, this is. Uh, Pippa is a Piper or a Pippa? Pippa. I, th well, Pippa. I think Pippa. 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 I would say Pippa. Pippa Steele, who plays uh, the niece of the general and is the first mm -hmm. victim. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> the one that you described earlier who dies and gets her heart. <laughs> gets the heart. Yeah, and, and the gets her head cut off. Yeah. Gets her head cut off. Yeah. Um, she was in Lust for a vampire. Hmm. And she died pretty young, and she was like 44. Mm. Yikes. Yikes. I, and well, she's, I, you, you, they kind of pull a psycho on you because you think she's going to be in the film yeah. for the entirety, but uh, she, she is in like a first little bit of it. Uh, and then we move away from the general and, and her to the, uh, the more, the, like I was going to say Morgan's. Is it Morgan's? Or oh, Morton's? actually, Morton's. I'm sorry. The first one, yeah, I, I got it mixed up. The first one is is uh, Kristen Lindholm. I was gonna say, yeah, that's yeah. that's a completely different character. That, who's yeah. only in, yeah, who's only in the pre thing? Yeah, right, right. I'm sorry. But so she one, dies and does not come back as a vampire, right? But I we do see rules. her walking off into the mist at one point. Hmm. 
I thought. I get I get a little confused about like that, that because because in the in the when the guy comes back, he says he killed everybody but one, which was Carmela. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, we'll we'll move on. Of course, there's Peter Cushing. What else can we say about Peter Cushing? What can we say? But I will say that bottom picture mm-hmm. is you talk about seeing pictures yeah. in those magazines and the books. Oh, well, yes. that's, that's that's one that one. stuck with me. Oh my gosh, that made me want to see this movie so bad. That looks so well. I- it was a great right? scene too, because technically the other guy is sort of the vampire hunter, right? Right. Yeah, it makes but you wonder Cushing why he's just going to take picture. over and goes, "I'll do it," and, well, and you're just going, "Yay!" Yeah, I want to see. You gotta see. Uh, but well, obviously, see if you got it, look on his face and the effort, especially when he goes to swing the sword. He's got this. He's got this. There's a close up of his face. He's got this. You know, like I'm really. Yeah. T- t- swinging hard on this one and i uh, it's not a pleasant thing to do but i'm i'm doing it as good as i can i don't know yeah. I, I thought I, it was yeah nice. i would i would have liked so i mean obviously i would have liked to have had more cushing because i think the character there's a lot that happens between when we last see the character you know as his niece dies and then he shows up again and you know look look how dapper and colorful and happy he is on the top and by the time we see him again He's the man in black. He's killing vampires. It's like here's it's almost like the origin of Van Helsing. I, I've seen some criticisms of this movie or you know, analysis of this movie where Peter Cushing represents the patriarchy, you know, going after this like she killed his niece. This girl was placed in his protection, and and this this murderous parasite comes along and kills her. Yeah, he's pissed. You'd be too. Yep. Yeah, but he gets the job done. She ain't coming back from this. I mean, nope. stake her through the heart, cut off her head. What we don't see is next to you, you shove garlic well, flowers into the mouth and burn the body. It's Triple actually tap. pretty good, pretty good logic, too, because the other guy, Hartog's already avenged his daughter mm-hmm. right yeah, back in the day. True. And uh, I think Cushing said something about Morton's worried about his daughter. So let me right. do it. Yep. He has hasn't avenged his niece. Well, anyway. <laughs> but he's also scene. he also is a bit more spry in this movie than he is in later films and mm-hmm. there's a reason why but you know yeah. there's a scene where he's running down the hallway when his when the niece screams now she's got she's the true screen queen in this movie is yeah. a, a pipe of steel she the hurt the times when she dreams about that giant cat which is Carmel. Mm-hmm. she yeah. um yeah she he comes darting down the hallway and um, you don't see that too much in later films because right. he gets, you know, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, well, like by the time he's in Star Wars, he's basically running around in his jammies on below the shot, right? So, <laughs> but we love him anyway. Love him, no yeah. cause for it. So, but yeah, I just I was noticing that I, I'm sounding horrible. I'm not meaning to sound as terrible as I am, but I was just noticing how. You know, in this film, the beginning of 1970, how you know, still energetic and spry he was, still comparative to you know 57 when he was doing, you know, the well, early Hammer films. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think you can pretty much divide everything from before Helen dies and after Helen dies. Because mm-hmm. yeah. he was going well, to be in, because wasn't he originally going to well, be in the second one? But yeah. Yeah. that was mm-hmm. one of the films. Right. That one and uh, the Mummy film. He showed up for the first day, I guess. Couldn't kind of like that mummy one because the mummy one he did similar right uh now twins of evil is only a oh, year maybe i mix this. that up maybe i mix that up mm. you were saying twins of evil is only a year after this yeah yeah okay yeah they both of them lust for vampire and twins of evil were both 71 correct mm. so mm. um you know you, you might you might be right you're thinking blood from the mummies too the Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. He Is was that the one person. where he couldn't, didn't, he sh- one of those two, he showed up for one day. Of, yeah. Yeah. Probably mm-hmm. Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. And the guy yeah. from uh, uh, Andrew Keir stepped in to yeah. replace him. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, we this, just did that one. Uh, he still looks damn great in costume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure does. And he's, and oh, when he's, the, the red outfit, though, suits him so well. He, he looks so regal in it, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. When he comes out there at the dance and everything. Really, really. But although I, I, all the other guys in the red outfits, 
<laughs> when, that, when, that, when that horse and carriage gets stuck in the mud and they all go flying off of it into the brush. <laughs> I was like, what, what the hell? Why they do that? Because there's like four four uh, red coats in there, right? And they go flying off. When they, oh, it's hilarious. Anyway, let's move on. We're running late. There's the picture we saw earlier, and they do. Those are behind the scene shots. Yeah. And look how they do look wonderful together, don't they? He's helping her into the coffin. He's a gentleman like that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, of course, there's the this mysterious man in black. This character. Yeah. This that guy. I have what no idea. Hell? What was his purpose? What, what we don't know. <laughs> he's mr smirk a lot he just like ah, everything is going according to plan really what's your plan but no, is your mind isn't the character not necessarily the actor in the other ones too doesn't he come in and say in one of the movies he comes in and i think it's lust for the vampire and he just comes in and says like one crazy ass line and that's it and <laughs> i can't really you know but there, there's something special about this guy he's in another hammer film later on yeah. what what film is that uh, down below what what uh, why, where's the where's that vampire looking Dracula the, dude with lipstick. What is that? The legend <laughs> of seven golden vampires. He's the only he's the only actor to play Dracula other than Christopher Lee in a hammer yep. film. Yep. And Christopher and boy, Lee they sure made him look like as much as they played. could like Christopher Lee. Like yep. if you if you squint your eyes. So your I don't breath. know how big the part was, but he, he was in Venom, the one mm. with uh Oh, geez, what's Ol his name? Oliver Klaus Reed. Kinski and Oliver Reed. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> that movie is... Uh, a movie about that movie would be the most horrifying movie ever made. He was also in Life Force, the Toby Hooper, ah. and Vault of Horror, the other hmm. Hamacus. He's in some good stuff. I just don't hmm. understand the role. I don't understand the purpose that these... Yeah, I don't either. There was well, some speculation that it was because they knew they were gonna they were gonna try to make a sequel, so they had to mm -hmm. have some kind of common character. But I, you know, it doesn't make know. sense. It doesn't make sense at all. No. Uh, there's some other actors that we we haven't had a chance to talk about. Um, Don Adams plays the Countess, who's along with this guy in <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, there's uh, let's see, Douglas Wilmer. Uh, George Cole plays Roger Morton. Uh, Ferdy so Maine. Hold, hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Uh, Ferdy Maine plays the doctor. So George Cole, Roger Morton was in the uh, Disney series, the Scare the Scarecrow. Oh, oh, oh I love that. Okay. Well, I don't, and at least he's listed as uh, they listed as a movie on IMDb. So they must have been you know put a couple episodes together and made a. Made a movie of it. I remember it as being on the show as different episodes with Patrick McGowan. Um, what? Oh, he's also later on. He was in Mary Riley in '96. And I, sh I should have made a slide for John Finch too, because he was in Frenzy, which we did, and he was in the final program, which we'll probably one day get around to. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like right after this. He did, uh, was he in the horror of Frankenstein too? Who? John Finch? I don't know. He was in Macbeth. Um, well, that's that's what I was going to say. It's because right after this, he Yes, goes he was does, in horror of Frankenstein. He plays Macbeth in Roman Polanski's Macbeth and then does mm -hmm. Frenzy. It's like you, you'd think your star is flying, but he has one of the, been one of those guys that said he, he did not want to be a star. Hmm. Um, so I don't know if he tried not to do that or not, but I, I he does he a lot of wonder about ride that. like the wind in this one, yeah, <laughs> from one place to another. Um, Doc, you mentioned, uh, so the, the other one I wanted to say something about is, uh, well, more than one, but Doug, uh, Wilmer, Douglas Wilmer, who was Von Hartog, mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. in Jason and the Argonauts. Ah, nice. And in, in kind of a weird piece of uh, synchronicity, he played Sherlock Holmes on TV in 64, 65. Oh. And I think uh, Cushing was the one that played him right after that. Sherlock Holmes. Nice. Uh, oh, you know, you know, he was also in Golden Voyages in bed. <laughs> yes, yes. And a couple of the Fu Manchu movies with Christopher oh. Lee. Oh, God, love him. 
Um, Sherlock Holmes, smarter brother. He played <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Wow. And who played this? Who played the smarter brother? Gene Wilder. There yeah. you go. <laughs> um, talking about me. octopusy. There you go. Uh, Ferdy Main plays the doctor in this, and he was in. He was Count von Krolock in the Fearless Vampire Killers. Yes. Oh. So there you go with that. And he was also in Where Eagles Dare. Mm -hmm. And the Vampire Happening. Oh boy. Oh. Better yet, The Howling 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't believe Chad's mm -hmm. not here. Frankenstein's mm -hmm. aunt. We've talked about that, haven't we? Oh, Frankenstein's 80s? aunt Tilly. Oh, my God. He played Dracula in that series. Whoa. It's just, it, it, well, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a series in the 80s called Frankenstein's aunt. Now, is it is it Aunt Tilly? I, well, I think uh, they might have chopped movie. it up into a movie and releases Frankenstein's great aunt Tilly, if I recall correctly. Uh, oh. Kirsten Lindholm, which we kind of mentioned, was in all three movies of the trilogy. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, and that's she's true. the one in the uh, the opening scene, and she's kind of the main one in Lust for a Vampire. Um, what else? I had some other guy: Douglas Wilmer, George Cole. Well, Hammer Hall is. He's in Lust of Vampire yeah. as well, and Twins of Evil. He's in all three films. He plays Franz yes. in Twins yes. of Evil. He plays Inspector Henrik in Lust. Um, yep. And he was in, uh, this is kind of weird, a TV movie of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde that starred David Hemmings in 19... David Hemmings! Oh, my wow. God, David Hemmings. All right. Um, <laughs> I, had, I had... I'm trying to think of what else. I know there was something else. Uh... Oh, Don Adams, who plays the Countess, was in uh, The Vault of Horror and The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. Yep. Hmm. One Thousand Eyes of Dr. Mabuse. Ah. <laughs> wow. So anyway, it's a, you know, there's it's a good cast. I know. It's almost too many to talk about. We're an hour and 19 minutes cast. in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but we got some feedback, so we need to wrap this up. Uh, you can, we can catch catch us on. We watch it on. Um, I think uh, I watch it on Freevee. Freevee, the part of Amazon Prime. Uh, had to watch commercials. It was terrible. I wish I'd just pulled out my Blu-ray yeah. <laughs> and yeah. put it in the thing, but I didn't have it. I wasn't in the right room to do that. Oh God! You couldn't walk to the right room. <laughs> well, I would. I or was I wanted buried but, somewhere. It, no. My wife was gonna my wife agreed to watch it with me so we watched it in the living room and and my player has moved upstairs with uh, so it's so we watched it together it's on, it was, it's on uh tubi and freebie yeah those, so. so it was it was it was fun to watch my wife she she thought it was silly but she laughed so hard when the bathroom the uh shot the bathtub scene afterwards when they started running around the room and bouncing yeah. on the bed oh she just thought that was the silliest damn thing yeah, that's that's, right. that's 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 what slumber parties are like, right? Uh, it's, yeah, it's what yeah. You like to believe. Oh, in, in the man's eyes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One one last one last scene to mention is at the end when uh, uh, Finch's character, I think his name is Carl, hold throws that dagger up to ward her off, mm -hmm. and then throws it at her. Yeah, and, and it, it goes, goes through, through her. her and breaks the cough the, the vase. That was yeah. so nicely. They it was they very did. well done. Yeah. yeah, they did a great job of it. Yeah, I like that they didn't waste their time explaining the vampire's powers. It's like you'll learn them when the people in the movie learn them. Yeah, the only time they did it is when they brought the one guy back and he was talking about you know chopping the head off and all that stuff yeah. and where they were buried and what all he did, which we already. Yeah. Uh, it's man. always that helpful <laughs> guy that comes and tells you, you know, if you chop the head off, they die. It's like, thank you, Mister Obvious. I think that's pretty much true for everything. <laughs> all right. Well, also, at first, I was thinking it seemed to me like she was biting the women in the breast hmm. and the guys in the neck. But then when all, she bites, only, uh, the governess, she bites her in the neck. Yeah, only the ones she wanted to. I, I think she was wanting them to change because they're the ones that yeah, don't, they don't they don't die right away, and but hmm. they never get to become vampires. 
So it was a, it was a um, nice little touch that uh, that picture at the end too, the portrait dissolved. Oh yeah, yeah, it yeah dissolved. Cool. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. That was really cool. I forgot that all about neat. that. Yeah. Where it turns into kind of a the skull or the bleeding skull face. Uh, all right, if leave your comments down below. We'd love to hear what you think of this film. And I know there's some of you out there have a lot to say, and we can't wait to hear from you guys. And um, I'm probably going to hear a lot about all the mistakes I made. But <laughs> any of you, uh, Jeff, I believe we have some feedback. We do have some feedback. We have so much feedback, I didn't have time to copy it all. So, I don't think we have time to say it all. <laughs> uh, so we've got a few here. Uh, we will pick them up as time goes by. And I don't know, how do we want to do this? Uh, so last week, if you all remember, we had some feedback on Damien Omen 2, episode 135. Mm. The person said, this is my favorite Omen. I don't like the first one, basically. I didn't mean to have the tone in there. I wasn't fair but anyway it's, uh, it's okay it's okay it, so I'm here's taking it back i'm taking it back uh, jose <laughs> Herrera leprone 9987 who uh, recently discovered the channel and is binging and uh, be careful jose there you, you could do damage here little of me goes uh, a long way <laughs> who, who wants to take that uh I'll do it. 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 Damien Newman too. I love the, uh, and, I, and it's, it's interesting that um, just a side note today, as we're recording this, they released the uh, trailer for the first Omen, which is oh. a prequel to the Omen series. Oh. So, uh, oh, worthless note there. Uh, Jose Lu Luis says, I agree with Chad's comment. I saw this only once years back and wasn't impressed. The boy under the ice is great. Um, that's a great and scary sequence. And the reporter having her eyes pecked out and then the dummy getting hit by the truck. Still in my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I like, I like the elevator scene. The elevator mm. scene is the one, you know, where the guy gets chopped in half. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. 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 That's a great. Well, there's scene. some good kills in that. It's, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then, then we have one, another from Jose Luis Ferreira La Parole. Uh, and I'm just going to start calling you Jose, if that's okay, sir. Uh, this is episode 190, Possession. Bill, you want to take that one? Sure. Jose says, I've not seen this one, but now I want to. I'll see if I can pick up the 4K. Uh, Mikey Z mentions Cohen's God Told Me To, and I've seen a few online discussions about that one, too. And want to see that one now as well. well I'll yes, tell you, you those, those two films together is a pretty good one-two punch of weirdness. <laughs> God, God told me to, I think, is a far better movie. But hey, if something we said made you want to buy the 4K, Jose, wow. any, any any film where you see a young Andy Kaufman marching down yeah. the street, it's worth well, it. It's worth well, it. Watch out! You know, you start with just one 4K film because you heard it from us. Next thing you know, you're Jeff Moore. Ah, yeah, gotta well, build shelves for all the 4K films. Uh, so, so uh, I thought he was saying he was going to buy 4K of Possession, which was, you know, for the nail biting, nail spitting scene, maybe. There you or, go. Or, or so you could see Harrison Ford uh, <laughs> fry alive. All right. Oh, I, I have these wrong. Uh, so that I, that's not what Bird with the Crystal Plumage. I don't have that episode number right, but also from Jose. Uh, Doc, you want to do that one? Uh, I can. We, um, <clears throat> I think I saw this around 1990. I read a book on Argento and had read about his films in other books. Uh, the first film I saw was Suspiria, as most of us started off of that, and was immediately hooked. This one was difficult to find, and when I finally did locate a tape, it was awful. Pan and scan, and so dark in places I couldn't tell what was going on. Oh, I remember those days. Later on, I found one of the DVDs, which turned out to be one of them, uh, that infamously had the long scene out of sequence, so the film didn't make any sense. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't know about that. Um, the first Blu-ray I found looked pretty good, but the 4K I have now is great. I can see why this is so influential in jump-starting the Giallo craze. It's a decent mystery as well as a thriller. Did we talk about the DVD having the missing sequence or out of out of out of sequence? Missing. I forgot. I don't remember I don't that. But that which, which was that again? I'm, I'm trying to verify something. I just said that I think it was wrong. 
Um, you said that there's a sequence or a scene that's out of sequence, a long scene that's out of sequence in the DVD. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember talking about that when we reviewed it. Hmm. If it did, it didn't stick with me. Oh, well. This is killing me. I don't know. Where did I get this from? What are okay. you talking about? I am you? totally wrong. Wow, am I wrong. All right. I got to go back to this because I got it mixed up. This That one, the possession one should have gone in 80s. Uh, oh. But he no, it's a, uh, told me too, which is 70s. Oh, so, so he's, he's talking, talking about the 80, the 80. The Sam Neill. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that, that one is incredible. That insane. is a great one. And that's worth getting 4K from. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas. I was thinking I of was like, well, I remember that. you disliking possession that much, but yeah, yeah, I was right. thinking there's of no the possessed. There's certainly so. no point in getting ah. a, a DVD, a 4K DVD of the possessed. It'll just look like crap no matter what you do. Yeah, I, I was My convinced that's what he was talking about there. Everybody for getting that all mixed up. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, it was worth it for the God told me to comment. Yeah. It works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it does fit 70s. I'll have to put this over in 80s too. So um and now Jose has one for. 202 blood spattered bride Sp spattered no, no, it is spattered. I, 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 there's no l in that that's me typing fast yeah. they spatter not splatter <laughs> so who who feels like the uh, go ahead bill <laughs> oh god this is a language lesson in spanish uh, jose says in spanish mancha is a stain pretty sure manchado is stained Manchado would be stained in Spanish. Never seen this one, but I sure have read a lot of it. I'm I apologize for mangling every single one of those words. Right. Of the course, he crosses the issue thing. was uh, there was a Spanish title that I ran through Google ah. Translate. And uh, hey, give me the next one too. I can mangle some uh, French. There you go. Do it. Do it. Oh, sure. Well, uh, this Bronx, one's for death. Uh, it's not death about game. death game, but that's where it was, and I love. Oh, it. so Bronson. Vigilante nine one seven eight says, "Happy New Year from France, J Vous Amy." Yeah, I'm not even close. I'm sorry. Vous Amy. Vous Amy? I, I, you know, I can't speak English, so I can't, you, I can't do French. English, yeah. <laughs> oh man, well, we appreciate it, and uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Thank Happy you. Happy New Year and to you too. Let's hope 2024 is better than 2023. Bronson got there before we did, that's for sure. Which yeah. means, which is, I love you in, in French, so... Oh, uh, so, so same, pronounce same that? Same to you, buddy. Uh, how, how do you pronounce it in, in, uh, in real life? In real Je life. Je vous aime. What? Okay. okay. Je vous... Oh, man. I wasn't even close. That, that's Google Translate, too. So. See, I would, I would start you know, a war if I was an ambassador. When you're, mm. when you're oh, injured Americans who think everybody had, should learn English, uh, I never know which letters... In what language or silent? That's the hardest Every, part. No, it. but French is a beautiful language. Everything, it is. no matter what it you is. say in French, it sounds absolutely beautiful. As opposed to some other languages from oh, some I, nearby nearby German countries, is. I could. Yeah, I was. I was sort of. You know. Oh, oh where, I'll, I'll say it. I'm German. Uh, uh, German heritage. It's it, Germany. Sounds like everything. Sounds like you're screaming orders. At yeah, me. yeah. You're starting a war. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, I got another one. We got one. More for Death Grame from Jose. Again. Hey, all right. You want me to do this one? Yeah, go for it, Doc. Uh, without warning would make a great episode. What a cast it has. And it did. True. It's in the, wasn't that in the 80s? That We did that in the 80s. Um, but maybe you and, guys and will do what? it again. We've done without warning? Oh. 1980s? No. Yes. We didn't do it? Nope. I don't think so. Uh, okay. Well, we'll do it then. You should do it because it is there a great film. Um, uh, it's funny you mentioned a theme uh, for feedback section. I was binging older episodes, and every time you come to feedback, I imagine the whoop 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 sound in the Adams Family <laughs> series when it comes when the mail comes in. The uh, uh, mails in. Is, is, I is, like is it. it. Is it whoop whoop whoop? How does it sound? I don't remember. I I, I don't recall what the sound is. It, it. I'll find a copy for you. There that would go. be funny, actually. We should we should so have that. Is, I'm just looking Feedback. real quick, but I'm almost sure the '80s didn't do without warning. But all I'm gonna check because well, we've, we've talked about there, it, and I wasn't. 
we've talked about it so much in passing that you know I feel like we've covered it a hundred times, but we maybe never did an actual episode on it. No, um, I, at least not on the list of episodes that I have, and I'm sure I don't have all the Mad Monster Party ones. But uh, no, it doesn't matter. You should cover it, even if it, even if it's the second one, do it because it is worth covering just for the the creature and the it's cameos. The, it's one. the frisbee flying monster thing. Yes, it certainly yeah. does. Certainly does. If we did. If we did, uh, well, wait a minute. What a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking of the other one. Never mind. Okay. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> um, I'm not going to explain. Well, we, we have chosen our next episode. Mm. And we this is another film that we've talked about so much that I would have said, surely we've covered it. Right. But we haven't. It just comes up in conversation so much, and that is Scream and Scream Again from 1970. Um, it it has a trio of horror stars in it that are not really the star of the movie, but Christopher Lee is more so than Vincent Price, who both are more so than Peter Cushing. <laughs> so much so that Peter Cushing actually never has a, shares a scene with the other two, and I think Christopher Lee and Vincent Price only share one scene, right? Sounds like a oh, Gordon Hessler movie. Yeah, it is. Uh, but it is an amicus, an amicus production. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and it is one of the most bizarre, strange, hmm. nonsensical, hard to follow, but oddly engrossing <laughs> horror films I think I've ever seen. I am excited for us to do this. Well, I'm excited too because I, right on the IMDb page, they have an uh, also known as. For Germany, oh, as God, here we go. the Liebenden Leichen des Ma Dr. Mabuse. What? <laughs> Dr. Mabuse is nowhere near this movie. That's like when they made every every Godzilla movie Frankenstein. Let's call it. Sure. Um, there, and we will say for those listening, and and hopefully Chad won't be listening to this. There is a surprise for Chad in this movie. Some of you know. Some of you know. Well, I've been going through our old episodes and, uh, you know, I got to do just a slight little bit of monkeying with it to get them up to uh, Play Now Media. Play Now Media, oh, yep. And by the way, he now has all our 70s video episodes, starting Yay. With episode 118. Do you remember the first one we, re we recorded on video? No, I don't. Which one was it? Octoman. <laughs> Oh, of course, yeah. what a what a perfect one to start with. An yeah. auspicious beginning. But anyway, I, I rediscovered the fact that, yes, there was a severed hand in, and now the screaming starts, too. Yes. Oh. yes. So, yeah, so you gave it away. You gave it away. <laughs> now, oh, I gave one. Well, I didn't give it away to. Uh, no, not at all. Um, all right. But there you go. That's our episode for tonight. We officially ran over and we're longer than the movie itself. Somebody will make a comment about that and we'd love yeah. to hear it. No. Uh, ah, yes, they will. Uh, Bill, Jeff, thank you for joining me. Uh, this is a lot of fun, as always. Thanks, Doc. Thanks Chad. Thanks, Chad. I hope, I hope everything comes that came out, Chad, because I, oh. I missed Eddie. Yeah. Yes, literally yeah. and figuratively. Um, yeah, with that, uh, let's say goodnight. Good night, night folks. everybody. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.